Hey everyone, this is the Love of Cinema podcast. We like to talk movies. If you like to talk movies too, you come to the right place. The kind of um, poetic sensibilities Maya had as well as Gulzar, the lyricist had. And the way Pancham composed, you, you will find it in complete sync. with the vision of the lyricist with the vision of the poet and the vision of the character it is just beautifully done you will see the composition reflects the character of maya uh, living that moment that the way pancham designed that particular flow is beautiful Hey guys, this is Iman Chu and you're listening to the Love of Cinema podcast. Here's a question. Have you ever discovered a movie serendipitously that has stayed with you since one lazy night in early 2000s while surfing TV channels? I discovered a movie with Rekha and Nasruddin Shah. I still remember that I was quickly hooked on and I kept watching till the very end. The film ended leaving behind a smile on my face. and a tear in my eye the movie of course was gulzar's poetically cinematic 1987 drama izazat izazat remains a standout film for several reasons one reason is that it's one of the go to gulzar films if you're looking for a window to the filmmaker's sensibilities a filmmaker whose takes on love lost love and marital discord feature among some of the most emotionally mature takes on relationships in the history of hindi cinema takes that are always presented with the sensitivity of a poet which is who gulzar is first and foremost but before more on izazat a quick request to all listeners if you enjoy organic conversations centered on indian cinema love us cinema podcast was created for people just like you so do consider subscribing independent podcasts like this one don't have a platform ecosystem for amplification and distribution Independent podcasts rely on amplification through its listeners. So if you like the episode, please do spread the word on social media. Also, do take a minute to review and rate the podcast. That would be much appreciated. Coming back to today's episode. Ek izazat de do bas jab isko dafnaungi main bhi wahi so jaungi. Izazat arrived quietly in 1987 and left just as quietly. The film's theatrical run was short-lived. Over the years, however, many have discovered the lovely film through its run on television and through word of mouth. Slowly, with the advent of social media, the film has been able to grow a huge fan following among millennials as well. A good film will always find its audience, and Izazat is a great example. Today, Izazat is immensely popular and widely loved. across generations and for a good reason made at a time when there weren't too many films being made around themes of divorce and live-in relationships it's definitely a film that was truly ahead of its time and perhaps that's why the film still holds up well and connects universally it's a film whose dialogue is almost as lyrical as its songs its songs are nothing short of special an absolute masterclass from Asha Bhosle, Pancham and Gulzar. And the lead performances are memorable across the board. Izazat features one of Rekha's finest performances. In Rekha's Sudha, we see Rekha the superstar take a back seat to Rekha the fine actor. Nasruddin Shah is Nasruddin Shah, excellent as always. And Anuradha Patel too is solid as the bold free-spirited Maya. Also perhaps just perhaps there lies a strong connection between a line from this film and a beautiful song from a Vishal Bharadwaj film more on that later all in all Izazat is one of my favorite gulzar films as i'm sure it is for many of you to delve deeper into izazat we have a very special guest on the podcast today pawan jha a technology consultant is also an avid film buff film historian and an archivist he also has a podcast 
that falls at the intersection of films, literature, music, and Indian culture. Called Hal Chal Teek Thak Hai. Check it out if you haven't. I would also recommend his lovely YouTube channel. I'll put in a link to the channel in the episode notes. Thanks to his encyclopedic knowledge of Hindi cinema and Hindi film music, he's always able to share great context around conversations on Hindi cinema. Pawanji is also a big fan of Gulzar, and as he likes to put it, also one of Gulzar's biggest critics. I'm glad I got a chance to chat with him on a film we both love. Here goes. Good evening, Pawanji. How are you? It's all good. First of all, thank you so much uh, for talking with us on the podcast today. And I'm really glad that I have you here to talk about uh, one of my favorite Gulzar films. My pleasure. Too. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Pawanji, I wanted to begin by talking about Gulzar as uh, a Hindi filmmaker who has time and again explored uh, relationships through uh, motives of lost love, sacrifice, marital discord, regret. And although many filmmakers like Bimal Roy, V. Shantaram, or Rishida, and others have explored that space before, what do you think makes uh, Gulzar and his films uh, special? Um, Gulzar is uh, truly special when we look back at the history of Indian cinema in terms of the kind of contribution he has uh, given to the artistic world, especially in India. And uh, if you see Gulzar, you cannot, you cannot pinpoint a specific reason to like him. Uh, I would like to quote a non-Gulzar uh, couplet here. Nida Fazli has written, Ki har admi mein hote hain das bis admi, jise bhi dekhna kai baar dekhna. So uh, Gulzar mein jo hai, you will find a lot of Gulzars in one single body. There's a lyricist Gulzar, there's a story writer, screenplay writer Gulzar, there's a director and a producer Gulzar, there's a dialogue writer, there's a narrator, but at the core of it is a poet, a poet uh, with sensibilities and emotions, and probably which drives the other Gulzars in that body. Hence, I would call him a poetic director because that makes him a totally different filmmaker. His background in the poetry. If you see a lot of uh, other um, legendary lyricists or poets of that time, uh, take the case of uh, Shailendra or Sahil Udhyanvi or Majroo Sultanpuri or Kafi Azmi, they didn't try to make films or uh, they didn't try to direct the films. But uh, what Gulzar did to the film world is he brought a poet who was a director also, who was a producer also, who was a story writer also, a lyricist also, a complete package. And somewhere, since you know, cinema is a collaborative medium. Collaborative medium means there's a story writer which comes up with a plot. There's a director who want to put his vision to that plot. So there's a screenplay writer who converts them into characters. The story writer has some basic characters, but the screenplay writer converts them to situations and uh, characters. The dialogue writer gives them a language to speak, but it is the director who gives them his vision to how he want to convey that story. And somewhere, uh, it is a very difficult medium if the people are on not same wavelength. Sometimes the synergy works uh, even in the different uh, wavelengths like Gulzar and A.R. Rahman and Dilse. Right. But still, still, uh, you have to have the same kind of wavelength across the team. Uh, the understanding of what story is going to be conveyed, how the director controls the medium and how the director controls all other cast and crew in that particular film is how a film shapes up. But when you have the story writer, the screenplay writer, the dialogue writer, the director, the lyricist as the same person, so you know each of them know each other uh, quite well. And somewhere these different personalities, the creative personalities, they also complement each other. For example, 
there is a significant amount of visual sense or visual imagery in the poetry of gulzar if if you talk of poet gulzar beyond cinema but if you read his poems which are not part of cinema you will have a significant amount of visual sense the mm. way a director is trying to convey his statement on a film so that poet gulzar does on the paper similarly the director gulzar gets a poetic sense and poetic sensibility to drive his story and plot and characters somewhere these capabilities put him uh, in an entirely different bracket i see so somewhere gulzar if you see his films they are remembered today for the poetic sensibilities and emotions and especially as a study of human relations yes yes and the film that we are going to be talking about today is certainly an example of that and uh, before we move on to talk more about that film you know when it comes to hindi films a lot of people like to dunk on the 80s you know so to speak and some of it might be justified as there were a lot of cookie cut mediocre films that were being churned out during that time but 80s have also given us some of the biggest hits and cult hits I was wondering if you could wind back the clock a little bit and circa yes. 1987 what kind of hindi films were being made and why in your opinion Izazat stands out as that rare film which delved into mature themes like live in relationships and uh, separation yeah 87 is an important milestone in indian cinema especially hindi cinema it wasn't aware that it actually is closing of an unusually bad era of filmmaking the bad era something that started somewhere in mid 70s with the advent of those action films the angry young men saga and those multi star or even that uh, mediocre uh, romantic uh, films but uh, that era the era of action films the era of multi star actually changed the language of cinema and its music also the way uh, the films were being made in that particular era so i would put 73 to 87 in a specific bracket where uh, it was the age of uh, um, those um, action films those crime thrillers those multi star uh, films and something which we had ne- not seen earlier they were uh, an odd uh, badban or they were an odd vakt uh, which you can say were multi star but 70s were totally different but 70s multi star um, they actually attracted a lot of people the fandom uh, for bollywood they attracted a lot of uh, success is yes, you, you can see the big hits in films like shole and jay santoshi ma in the same year absolutely but then you the, the 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 actual the reality started coming out and uh, because multi star had their own issues you you could attract uh, the uh, fan following of rajesh khanna amitabh bachchan shashi kapoor together but film making became much more complicated it was for the personal relations of the actors it is the internal conflicts it is the you can say ego ego uh, beyond the real life and uh, then there were a lot of issues with the adjustments of dates the time and calendar in sync because if you want to shoot amitabh bachchan and rajesh khanna who were doing uh, 10 films or 5 films differently so you you had to brought them together to shoot them together that uh, time and sync was very uh, so somewhere our uh, that that model of film making started to fade down because it started delaying many of the projects and a lot of films started taking years because there were issues of the dates there were issues of the conflicts there uh, there were issues of the personal egos and whatever although there were people like rishikesh mukherjee basu chatterjee sham benegal govin nilani and of course gulzar who were making cinema for their creative pursuit so somewhere we had some good cinema but uh, far and few in between ijazat not only stood out 
from the films in 1987 it is still one of the most unusual cinema experience and across generations the way it connects to people of this generation it is truly surprising but it is not surprising if you see Izazat at the core the kind of sensibilities uh, the film carries the kind of emotion the film carries they are not only universal but they are also somewhere ahead of its time in the way Gulzar projected the time that is coming the generation that is coming if you see the characters Nasruddin Shah is a freelance photographer freelance is very important mm. that's a very interesting career for a hero of cinema of that decade Maya is an FTII student that again gives another dimension to that uh, the characters the protagonist of Ijazat were um, actually have a great balance of intellect as well as the emotions and somewhere that poet Gulzar brought that emotions and the intellect Gulzar brought those characters those traits very clever writing you will find in the film that the kind of wit he has used in the dialogue the kind of punches and the punches you can feel them straight on your face as an audience and <laughs> that was a new kind of experience and even for 87 actually 87 not a lot of people have seen the film even I missed it out in the theaters and uh, I explored the film through its cassette for a long time up to uh, early 90s because it came and it went uh, from our theaters uh, and probably I might not be aware of that even for some other occupancies but I did explore the film through its cassette because um, the cassette had the dialogues and somewhere the dialogues give you that unseen cinema experience because songs you can listen in isolation you you might not need to go to those characters you might not need to study those characters you can just enjoy the music you can just enjoy the poetry beyond cinema so somewhere the dialogues cassette gave me the insight of the characters the insight of the stories that were woven uh, in that film as well as it uh, raised my expectation the way the dialogues cassette was uh, designed it was beautiful the way that wo ek dialogue tha na usme wo gaane se pehle aata hai ek dafa wo yaad hai tumko bin batti jab cycle ka chalan hua tha yes humne kaise bhooke pyare becharon si acting ki thi havaldar ne ulta ek athanni dekar chhod diya tha ek chavanni meri thi wo lauta do aur bhi kuch saman tumhare paas pada hai wo bhijwa do now this dialogue gives you that that what what kind of film it it is going to be it is very interesting it has that uh, specific tinge of wit it has that kind of poetry it has that emotion so somewhere the intellect and emotional balance that film carried in its characters in its stories in its episodes was exceptional somewhere it was a totally different experience and speaking of dialogue in the film uh, let's dive uh, deep into the film now and let's start talking about uh, specific uh, moments from the film aadate bhi ajeeb hoti hai aadate chali jati hai adhikar nahi jate gulzar of course uh, like you said is a poet first and then a filmmaker and his command over words and his gift for word play is no secret and I know you are also a poetry aficionado. Uh, could you elaborate a bit really. on the wordplay around quote unquote Adat? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, one reason why Ijazat still connects to a lot of people because there's so much of humor underneath. There's so much of layers underneath. You can start exploring layers. You might be watching Ijazat say 50th times, but you might still be discovering something new and that is where a success of film lies where you explore a lot of layers and especially the layers beyond even the creator 
that's where a piece of art becomes uh, important where the audience have their own interpretations their own understanding of cinema they can map their own sensibilities to whatever is happening on screen and if you see how gulzar the dialogue writer the poet and the director meet under one umbrella from the beautiful example you have given ki aadatein chali jati hain adhikar nahi jate if you see that scene uh, or if you see a scene prior to that uh, ram mohan who played that uh, station master in the film he brought a bottle of whiskey <laughs> yes yes and uh, nasuddin shah actually want to have a glass of that but rekha actually stops station master that don't give him to wahan pe wo aata hai ki aadatein chali jati hai adhikar nahi jate wo jo daantne ka adhikar tha na rokne ka adhikar tha na ji to you can actually experience that in another scene to somewhere wo jo wahan pe he is very clear the dialogue writer the screenplay writer and the, the director they are very clear ki wo jo connects hain wo bade easy ho jate hain fir ki ek scene ko dusre se kaise connect karna hai jahan pe वो ऑडियंस को भी किक मिलता है राइट सो इफ इफ यू सी इजाजत इज एक्चुअली अबाउट टू इजाजत इज नॉट वन इजाजत विच रेखा टेक्स एट इन द एंड वाई वाई द नेम इज इजाजत वहां पे भी वही आदतें चली जाती हैं अधिकार नहीं जाते दे आर नॉट मैरिड एनी मोर बट शी टचेज द फीट ऑफ नसीर एंड आस द परमिशन कि पिछली बार तो मैं बिना पूछे चली गई थी इस बार इजाजत दे दो तो वहां से वो फिल्म का टाइटल देना ही हुआ है लेकिन फिल्म का एक और टाइटल है कि एक इजाजत दे दो मुझको जब इनको दफनाऊंगी वो अनुराधा पटेल की इजाजत है एंड बोथ आर एक्चुअली आस्किंग परमिशन फॉर एस्केप एंड दे दे आर सीकिंग परमिशन बिकॉज एक इजाजत उनकी शादी हो चुकी है she wanted to close that relationship it, it, it she want to break that because to uh, anuradha uh, patel writes ki ek ijazat de do mujhko jab usko dafnaungi main bhi wahi so jaungi the the culmination for anuradha patel was that somewhere that was the resolution wahi tha but the writer gulzar here uh, delivers another punch with a surprise that nasir in the end turns out to be a bechar where ijazat the heroes of ijazat are the two women the the two female protagonists and somewhere uh, nasir uh, actually despite all the honesty in his character in his relationships he eventually turned out to be a loser in the relationship and somewhere that is Uh, one of the major crux of the film they there the director gulzar delivers that punch that surprise punch yeah the film is filled with uh, magical moments uh, so to speak and um, you know i wanted to talk about the closing sequence of the film but before that there are many other moments um, what are some of your favorite moments uh, you know that you absolutely adore so many almost almost every <laughs> frame <laughs> right my most favorite if you start with is the opening sequence the way the choti si kahani se barishon ke pani se sari wadi bhar gayi is filmized in the title roles is absolutely brilliant because ijazat is not only about the characters it is also the ambience and the ambience adds so much value to the film in terms of um if you see the kind of nature that uh, gulzar explores or maya's home or even uh, whatever uh, outdoor they have shot it is so beautifully done in terms of aesthetics in terms of the creative contribution to the film and speaking of that opening sequence the way the train comes and wo uh, western ghat pe the train is uh, um, passing and the season is monsoon and you can see those drops on those leaves uh, on those trees so so that the imagery is absolutely brilliant and poet gulzar comes to the fore and he comes up he he delivers a punch ki choti si kahani se 
बारिशों के पानी से सारी वादी भर गई मीन्स ही इज गोइंग टू टेल अ स्टोरी विच इज वेरी स्मॉल वेरी सिंपल थ्री कैरेक्टर्स बट इट इज समथिंग विच विल कंप्लीटली ड्रेंच यू विद इमोशंस लाइक द रेन वॉटर डस इट इज अ कॉन्शियस एफर्ट टू ब्रिंग आउट दो इमोशंस द काइंड ऑफ frames he provide there and especially there's a very interesting punch in the end of uh, that particular uh, sequence uh, i would also like to highlight about the music and his collaboration with pancha if you see the the song starts with the there are two accordions being played and uh, you, you can feel that uh, vibrations in your heart listening to those uh, chords the kind of uh, emotions music evokes and so you can actually feel that rains inside when you hear that song and that especially with that accordion and the song and with the fading out of those accordions and you see how beautifully director gulzar gets the train slowing down to a station mm. and actually it is in sync with those accordions right the way they slowly fade out it's a beautiful moment of cinema making as well as music making as well as uh, lyrical writing if you see the song actually carries all the credits of the film but somewhere director gulzar has not given the credit in the film and you see a brief moment where the train stops and you feel the credits are over nasir gets down and nasir shouts for a kuli and then you see the credits of gulzar coming in like he is carrying the film on his shoulders <laughs> that's a very interesting moment definitely yes yeah and there is so also an see, interesting yeah. shot of yeah. uh, the the rails uh, the rail tracks joining again yeah yeah so, and there you see uh, the sync with the music that rd baman has given you see those two accordions there when the two tracks are joining right so that's a very beautiful moment in the film so if you if you start asking me the most favorite moments so there are plenty so maybe we <laughs> might not uh, we, we 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 might need to do a complete series <laughs> <laughs> i know it's a, it's a beautiful yeah. film but well, let let's yeah. talk about the closing sequence of the film yeah. Uh, yeah. the yeah. very last bit uh, nasir and sashi kapoor exchange glances kapoor envies nasir and vice versa and it's difficult to conceal and there's no melodramatic writing or music uh, just a pair of glances and both uh, being such excellent actors uh, that's more than enough and it's such an understated closing it's very classy Uh, leaves a lot unsaid but it it does provide some sort of closure to the movie as well absolutely i believe that the climax shot although the film was already on a high the climax shot took it to a further high especially for the charm of shashi kapoor it is one of my most favorite cameos in hindi cinema the value he adds with just a minute of his arrival and his performance and screen appearance the, the kind of amazing charm that he had and also the grace because the way he portrayed that uh, an elderly man and if you see ijazat ijazat is not about a young romance it is all about mature dreamers all all the characters are matured all the characters uh, they they carry that uh, uh, kind of balance in, within them so somewhere that the old man uh, that, that the kind of charm with that those little nuanced uh, traits like small smile the, the way he looks at nasir the way he looks uh, reacts to um, reka uh, touching the feet of nasir the way that the kind of question mark he also has on his face so the veteran actor brought so much in that one minute it's such a beautiful beautiful cameo and uh, somewhere that value addition gives the film another another damage it is it is it is shashi kapoor's own uh, contribution also to the film definitely so that's a very interesting climax even for the cinema of 87 it is you cannot call it a happy ending 
but it is a kind of a statement that the film wanted to make and the culmination of the characters where nasir is standing on the station alone despite building so much of hope for a reunion for a redemption the film progresses to a point where you feel there is going to be a redemption which is actually a significant trait of hindi cinema which which actually always delivers you a very happy kind of ending where you are going back happily and ya to romantic film hai to dono ki shaadi ho gayi agar angry young man ki film hai to villain ki death ho gayi but you are going back uh, home happy here you are leaving the hero of the film so far the hero of the film again at the same uh, crossroads with the same questions with the same problem there is no redemption to his life but there is a statement in that exit similarly it is a story of a man who was torn between his uh, commitment and his love it is a very interesting study on institution of marriage because how gulzar differentiate between a wife and a life partner and somewhere when a man can't strike a balance between the two and somewhere there's uh, sometimes there's no resolution if you see that situation if you are in that conflict somewhere you have to compromise a lot and somewhere rekha rekha was not ready to compromise she was a picture of grace dignity and self respect and somewhere there is no harm to her dignity and grace but there is a significant harm to her self respect and somewhere she 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 cannot actually do that compromise with that self respect somewhere as a wife she wanted a full commitment and somewhere she find that nasiruddin shah is still divided between the two and she does try to actually have a balance in the equation to have a, a triangle equilibrium but somewhere in the beginning she actually tries to adjust with maya but with time she feels that maya to bahut sari jagah hai nasir even nasir makes a very honest effort to have that relationship going with the rekha बट uh, अगर वो कहीं रिजोल्यूशन होता तो शायद ये स्टोरी नहीं बनती ये फिल्म नहीं बनती तो द ब्यूटी ऑफ द फिल्म इज दैट काइंड ऑफ रेजोल्यूशन वेयर देर इज नो रेजोल्यूशन डिस्पाइट बींग माया नॉट देयर इन द फिल्म इन द इक्वेशन एनी मोर गुलजार ड्रॉज दो लाइन्स फॉर दो कैरेक्टर्स एंड देयर पर्टिकुलर एक्ट इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट द वे रेखा takes her decision uh, actually nasir also respects her decision in the pre climax there is a very interesting dialogue which actually is a repeat of a dialogue from an earlier time which which forms the crux of decision making uh, ijazat is about decision making and uh, gulzar puts it there jo sach hai aur jo sahi hai wahi karo and in the end before the climax he actually tells maya ki ab rekha jo karegi wo sab bilkul theek karegi kyunki usko pata hai ki kya sach hai aur kya sahi hai but see now uh, there's a very interesting aspect to this dialogue sach is your truth and sahi is your correctness the truth or the honest thing is not always correct the correct thing may not always be what is a truth on face so somewhere so decision making is the balance of two and that's where rekha's decision uh, is actually supported with this dialogue ki jo sach hai aur jo sahi hai so sach ye tha us relationship mein ki rekha was unable to adjust because nasir was unable to adjust with the he was trying hard um, he was trying very hard but still there was wo ek jagah kehte hai na ki wo um, जब सबसे पहले सीन में ही आता है कि वो माया को कैसे ढूंढती है कि वो पर्स खोलती है उसमें एक उसको लड़की की फोटो दिखती है जब उसको शायद दूध वाला होता है या सब्जी वाला होता है उसको पैसे देने होते हैं right. तो नसीर कहता है कि मेरे पर्स में से ले लो तो पर्स खोलती है तो अनुराधा पटेल की फोटो आती है 
उसको पता होता है क्योंकि शादी से पहले दे हैड डिस्कस दिस सिचुएशन बट शी वॉज एक्चुअली शॉक टू सी दैट नसीर हैजन रिप्लेस दैट फोटोग्राफ विद हर्स और वॉट एवर नसीर हैजन रिमूव दैट फोटोग्राफ नसीर टेल्स हिम कि हर जगह से निकाल दिया है किसी कोने में शायद रह गई है वहां से भी निकाल देंगे रेखा टेल्स बैक की यार आई एम नॉट हैप्पी विद दिस बिकॉज सब कुछ तो बटा हुआ लगता है मेरा कुछ भी नहीं है पूरा मतलब द काइंड ऑफ ओनरशिप द काइंड ऑफ कमिटमेंट शी इज लुकिंग फॉर इन दैट मैरिज फ्रॉम हर हजबेंड दैट इज द फाउंडेशन ऑफ आवर मैरिज द इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंडियन मैरिज सो वहां पे समवेयर गुलजार रॉज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ट्राइंगल बिटवीन द इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ मैरिज द वे द ट्रेडिशनल वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट इट एज वेल एज द the sensibilities of a newer generation the free generation the open generation ijazat is one of the first films to feature those uh, live in relationships because the way nasir and uh, uh, maya uh, yes are they are in the live and uh, there is also a catch because again gulzar makes a statement on institution of marriage because anuradha patel says ki i can do anything in this relationship but i can't marry because i have seen the a worse side of marriages from her own experience of her parents marriage the way uh, it has killed her growing up years her own uh, growth as a human being it had a lot of dents a lot of scratches which cannot be removed so that is why she is so much against of that particular institution what i wanted to tell you that the kind of character rekha brought in and especially with her traits because if you see in mid 80s Rekha was a superstar. So Rekha had that superstar thing going on, because she was doing a female leads, the female protagonist in a lot of films, even above the heroes. If you see a lot of films like Bivi Hoto Aisi and Khun Bhari Mang, so Rekha was doing a lot of such kind of roles, jahan pe she was actually the hero of the film. and those traits uh, actually give support to rekha's decision you don't find let down with the her decision because she is not weak it is also displayed in the dialogues if you remember there's a scene she decides to take a divorce and dina patak asks her are you going to take divorce kya tum talaq lene ja rahi ho rekha says no i am going to give the divorce mm. i am मैं तलाक लेने नहीं जा रही मैं तलाक देने जा रही अब दिस इज समथिंग वी एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम रेखा एंड दिस फिट्स हर ट्रेट सो मच मतलब उसके जो एक जिसको हम एक सुपरस्टार का वो देते हैं एंड शी हैज दैट अपर हैंड इन दैट रिलेशनशिप एंड एक फीमेल प्रोटोकॉनिस्ट होने के बावजूद भी वो एक पंच है उसको कि मैं तलाक ले नहीं रही हूँ दे रही हूँ बहुत सिंपल सा छोटा सा डायलॉग है बट कहाँ पे वो एक अपर हैंड वहां उसका नजर आता है उसका कन्विक्शन उसका जो सेल्फ रेस्पेक्ट के लिए उसकी जो फाइट है सो यू कैन सी ऑल देयर इन दैट वन डायलॉग व्हाई शुड आई गिव अपर हैंड इवन इन आस्किंग फॉर अ डायवर्स आई शुड गिव यू आई शुड हैव द अपर हैंड सो दैट वाज रेखा दैट वाज द कैरेक्टर ऑफ सुधा इन इजाजत देर इज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल मोमेंट जो सिंस यू आस्क मी अबाउट द मोमेंट इन द फिल्म की वो पर्स में देखती है अनुराधा पटेल she finds anuradha patel in in his purse and then definitely there's a question mark why he is keeping that photograph instead of her that's a genuine question but what the maestro behind the camera does that he brought back this particular scene in a different way see guzar is a master of flashbacks the way he binds his stories of the different time space the way he binds so yeah, there's a flashback moment where rekha sees that photograph in the purse and in the railway platform sequence which is in the current which is not in the past she also when nasir is not there she also tries to sneak have a glance in that purse ki whether there is still maya in that purse usko khojne ki koshish karti hai itna khoobsurat moment hai Hmm. और यू सी वैसे वो दो आइसोलेशन में बहुत खूबसूरत मोमेंट है बट वेन यू कनेक्ट देम 
तो दे वहां पे वो क्राफ्टमैन की जो क्राफ्टमैनशिप है ना वो वहां दिखती है That shows, right? इतना खूबसूरत वो दो टाइम स्पेसेस को कनेक्ट करते हैं उस सिंगल एक उस मोमेंट से और द मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दिस इज कि द राइटर एंड द डायरेक्टर गुजार लीव अ लॉट ऑन द इमेजिनेशन ऑफ ऑडियंस बिकॉज ही डजेंट शो वॉट इज देयर इन साइड ही डजेंट शो यू विच विच फोटोग्राफ इज देयर शी टेक्स अ ग्लैंस एट दैट पर्स में वो पर्टिकुलर कॉर्नर पे but uh, that's where uh, he leaves it on you yes yeah very interesting observations yeah. and uh, yeah the film is just uh, you know peppered with all these magical moments and we yeah. could keep on talking about that yeah, yeah. like you said um let's move on to the music pawan ji and we cannot talk about izazat without talking about its great music mm-hmm. and uh, just a little bit about the music the songs truly stand out they feel organic they're remarkably integral to the story All four songs are female solos. All are sung by Asha Bosle. I would love to hear you talk about the music, but before that, I have two specific questions for you. Yes. Was yes. there any specific reason behind having all the songs sung by Asha Bosle? Also, was there any specific reason that she provides playback for both Sudha and Maya? Not really. I believe it is the conviction of director and music director, and especially if you see. uh gulzar and panchams working you see a lot of films were dominated by lata ji and a lot of films were dominated by asha ji very few films you find both of them having an equal balance so uh i believe probably uh, it is uh, it starts with mera kuch saman tumhare paas pada hai and if you see that song was going nowhere and it was asha bosle who provided that kick to that song pancham was quite confused uh, in composing that particular song because he was unable to read that meter and uh, a lot of people call that song as a meterless song but that was not a meterless song every song has a meter but it can be a complex meter it can be a different meter but it is not a meterless song as gulzar sahab has told me once so that song is a very interesting meter but pancham was not getting the start how to think about it and that's where asha ji came in and she was just humming that opening lines and somewhere she just started the ignition for pancham from there on pancham uh, took on and took the driver seat and the credits to asha bosle for starting that engine but then uh, the way pancham composed it it's just brilliant the, brilliant the, the, absolutely you, you just see the kind of um poetic sensibilities maya had as well as gulzar the lyricist had and the way pancham composed you you will find it in complete sync with the vision of the lyricist with the vision of the poet and the vision of the character it is just beautifully done you will see the composition reflects the character of maya uh living that moment that the way pancham designed that particular flow is beautiful but yeah. but it was asha who actually kicked off Uh, that particular uh, song uh, that is why uh, probably it was all asha because they thought uh, she is the best voice for that film may be it uh, sudha be it my it doesn't matter because you you will see a lot of films uh, where uh, uh, if it's uh, justified by the music director and it is as per the conviction of the director if he agrees i i don't think there's a uh, uh, <coughs> issue with that and you will find uh, that with a lot of films uh, of lata ji and asha ji where they dominate the score they 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 sing for a lot of characters in the same film because somewhere they have that that uh, capability of bringing that nuances for that character absolutely and and if you if you hear fir kisi shaakh ne feki chhao and if you hear mera kuch saman you will not say that it is the same character asha ji is there same voice is there but absolutely two different moods two different characters uh, both are melancholic both are uh, have a kind of sadness a lo- uh, loneliness attached to the song but still somewhere they are totally different songs 
And one more thing about the music besides uh, the songs, the background score, the background score, so to speak, is very minimal in the sense yeah. that it lends a nice, uh, you know, foreground, uh, it lends the focus towards what's going on on the screen. And although there are a lot of emotional moments and there are a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of melancholy in it, but the music, the background score, so to speak, like the BGM, that has been yeah. kept to a very minimal uh, level. And that was very yeah. nice. That too. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, again, that uh, poetic sensibility the film deserved. So all the creators uh, brought in that. And Pancham actually found a particular scope in the title song. Because there's a train, there's a movement. So he brought all those ins instruments, all those innovations there. Right. But, but when, when uh, the Firkisi shark was required, so you didn't require too many instruments. Well, uh, I'm talking about songs. But even in the film, there's very little background pieces because the dialogues are the music of the film. There's so much of poetry accomplished within the dialogues in the film because Maya is a poetess and uh, she writes, she expresses her emotions in poetry. So within the dialogues, you will find a lot of poetry. So somewhere that poetic aspect of that film probably reduced the requirement of background music. You will uh, find a lot of poems in the film, like in the beginning, Maya's introduction, the introduction of Maya in the beginning. There's a poem, Chalte chalte mera sayak, kabhi kabhi yun karta hai, ki jameen se utkar, saamne aakar, haat pakad kar kehta hai, ab ki baar mein aage aage chalta hoon, aur tu mera peecha karke, dekh zara kya hota hai. To ab, जब डायलॉग्स में पोएट्री है तो आपको म्यूजिक की इतनी जरूरत नजर नहीं आती राइट व्हाट अदर इंटरेस्टिंग बिट्स कैन यू शेयर अबाउट द म्यूजिक आई बिलीव पीपल नो दैट छोटी सी कहानी से बारिशों के पानी से वाज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द फिल्म बट इट बिकेम पार्ट ऑफ द फिल्म एंड देयर वाज नो सिचुएशन इन द स्क्रिप्ट ऑफ द फिल्म वेयर द सॉन्ग could be uh, actually adjusted, but it was so beautifully made by Pancham that Gulzar and Pancham decided to keep the song in the film as a title song. And we have already discussed about that song. Katra Katra, there was a very interesting challenge, a kind of a bout between two boxers, Gulzar and Pancham, where uh, Gulzar was writing and uh, Pancham uh, was composing. So the, uh, Pancham has used a twin track, if you see, uh, in that particular song. He has used a twin track uh, recording where uh, Behene Do, Behene Do, Behene Do. Uh, you, you, you see. Uh, so usually how twin tracks are recorded, they are recorded twice and then again re-recorded with a gap between uh, the two recordings. So it, it is kind of an innovation because Pancham is known for that kind of innovation right from 60s. Uh, there was a song in Baharo Ke Sapne Kya Janu Sajan. There's, you can find a twin track. Or you, there was a song in Jewel Thief for Dada Barman where Pancham was associated. Right. right. Hai kya uske paas meri dekhi hai. So you will find this Deep. twin track uh, experimentation from him. And somewhere, wherever Pancham got some scope of uh, innovation and improvisation, he always, always... Uh, tried to use that and somewhere I believe it was the setup, it was the ambience ambience of the mountains that was a driving point for Pancham to uh, brought that kind of thing And but uh, in the beginning when Gulzar wrote Katra Katra on that so it was a kind of a punch back for Pancham uh, because Pancham couldn't understand the meaning of Katra Katra so he asked Bhai, ye Katra Katra hata do, ye so, Guzar Sahib is very particular about the sounds of the word, not only his poetry, but also the sounds, the way uh, the word, uh, specific word is sound. So, he asked Pancham, ki, should I do it boond boond behene do, or noor noor behene do? So, then Pancham realized, nahi, katra katra is sounding well. So, so, then he kept that. So, the, the, the kind of creative differences, it, it, it used to act like a creative understanding together because both used to extend each other rather than support each other they used to extend each other's vision you can find it in the uh, music of Ijazat also just four songs 
and uh, only four songs. One of um, the songs is a uh, title song and the rest three of songs are totally three distinct moods, distinct songs. Katra Katra, the song that happens on that honeymoon that was Periyar Lake. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's uh, the same location that one of the songs from Gupt was uh, shot at. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of songs, even Ashoka, you can find. Ashoka too, yes. Asho- Ashoka also. The natural ambience to that particular song, the nature and contributes so much to each other in terms of the rains that is uh, coming on the station, in terms of the uh, rains that is that Maya is observing at her home, uh, that, that uh, is inviting her to write. There is a turbulence of emotions that is uh, portrayed in that particular song. So, uh, speaking of uh, Katra Katra, it uh, showcases the face of Rekha's point of view towards that relationship. That She wants to have that journey of love. It is not the destination that matters. That thirst is something that will keep growing the relationship. So, Pyasi hum mein, Pyasi rehne do. It is, it is a beautiful emotion. You, you are moving towards a culmination or a satisfaction. But that point is infinity. So somewhere your love is having a journey to infinity. That is why the thirst is always there because it is a push in that relationship. Accomplishment means completion of the relationship. So she wants the thirst to be there. So wo us gaane mein itna bahut khubsurat ek emotion hai, itni khubsurat locations hain. The, the way the cinematographer Ashok Mehta uh, has shot them. It's, who does have a small cameo in the film, correct? Yes, yes, yes. He has a, <laughs> He's the person who comes, Maya ka phone aaya hai. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's there in the film and it's an interesting cameo. Yes, small thing. And later on, he made that film uh, Moksh as yes. a director. Yes. So, Arjun Ashok Ram Mehta Ram is Ram one Ram. of the... Although Guzar Sahib was doing uh, films prior to Ijazat with other cinematographers like K. Vekunt, but uh, Ijazat was a kind of a, a big change and the way uh, Ashok Mehta brought his contribution to the uh, to, to those beautiful frames, it is exceptional, especially the way he shot the opening sequence or uh, all the outdoors that he shot or even the indoors with the, uh, with the characters, the kind of equations they have. There's a specific language to that camera yes beautiful language. yes even in the waiting room i mean the shadow play yeah, and everything yeah, it's it's yeah, uh, tremendously yeah. shot so ashok mehta was um, uh, another craftsman and he also contributed a lot to the film also Pavan, and, is it true that one of the lines uh, mahendra's lines uh, bol rahi ho, badi kamini ho, uh, inspired vishal bharatwaj to write uh, meri arzu kamini See, I don't see uh, <laughs> much of a point there. Reason being, ki Guzar Sahib is Punjabi and in usual Punjabi language, Kamina is a sweet gali, a sweet uh, address to friends and all. So you can, uh, if you see his earlier films also, you, you will find such interesting addresses. You can say it is a kind of a aspect that uh, writer Guzar brings in his dialogues whether it's Namkeen, whether it's Kitab, you will always find even Achanak, you will always find such sweet abuses, uh, abusing addresses, which, which showcases the closeness of two characters. You, you can call a Kamina to a very close friend, not to someone who is not very, very good friend. So somewhere it, it shows the kind of closeness the characters have. So I'm not, I have not heard Vishal Bhardwaj saying this, but maybe if he has said, I might have missed it. Do you, do you know if Vishal is a big fan of this particular film? I haven't read or discussed, but I am sure uh, he is because I have been witness to his knowledge and his love for Guzar Sahib cinema. He, he actually hearts each and every songs of Guzar Sahib. And he's very, very impromptu. He, he, you can call him a kind of a Guzar encyclopedia. Uh, and somewhere you can find a lot of inspirations from Guzar Sahib's uh, kind of cinema, but still uh, he has his own language and uh, he has his own craft. Uh, but of course, uh, you can find, uh, it is like an education. 
टेंथ की किताब में क्या पढ़ा था या इलेवेंथ की किताब में क्या पढ़ा था वेन वी वेन वी इम्प्लीमेंट दैट इन अवर प्रोजेक्ट वी डोंट से दिस इज दिस इज दिस आई हेड इन इन माई टेंथ क्लास और इलेवेंथ क्लास Now let's talk about the source material of this movie. Uh, this yeah. film is based on Subodh Ghosh's novel, yeah. and um, how close do you think is Gulzar's adaptation to that book and uh, Tapan Sinha's earlier adaptation? Uh, it is to me. It is a totally different picture from from the earlier Jatu Grah uh, that was uh, made in Bengali by Tapan Sinha or the novel itself, and. Uh, i have read it somewhere that even both gosh also told him that this is not my novel this is your film so it's a it's a compliment to the writer also how ijazat is actually on a totally different tangent because the crux the core of the film uh, is a quite different the objective of the film is quite different from the other two uh, pieces the source uh, materials reason being ki jatu grah if you see as a novel or as a film it was more of exploration of a failed marriage a relationship between a husband and a wife and uh, something that is failed and somewhere there's a review there's a expression of guilt and somewhere it ends with a redemption although it has a very beautiful ending where uh, tapan sinha shows two trains going in two different directions the film ends on that shot that's a beautiful scene to culminate the film but still if you see both the characters they leave each other with a sense of uh, not emptiness some kind of fulfillment in that interaction so somewhere jatu grah was more about redemption and uh, of course exploration of what went wrong study of that failed marriage but ijazat goes on a totally different tangent with an introduction of maya and the character of maya is not there either in the novel or in the film the way guzar sketched that character colored that character painted that character is a, is totally complete handwork of his it's completely his convictions his sensibilities that is how he actually takes the film on a totally different tangent from jatu grah and another introduction of shashi kapoor that also takes the film to a totally different direction where the uh, character of sudha actually takes the film into a totally different direction so the introduction of shashi kapoor actually adds another dimension to the film and it raises the character of rekha to another peak these were the elements that makes ijazat a totally different film a very special film and then uh, the the dialogues and the moments which he, he didn't carry from jatu grah he he created his own moments and the, if you see ijazat ijazat is a film of moments you can watch a specific moment in isolation and still be very happy about it you can see a specific episode in uh, part it is a film of moments and you really cherish and enjoy those moments so actually when the film was released people enjoyed those uh, moments but somehow were disappointed with the, uh, you can say some of all parts the culmination and all because it was kind of a, a different language of cinema that is why i told you earlier that ijazat was much ahead of the time because uh, the kind of connection it uh, actually created with the future generations the coming generation even the today's generation if you see the social media especially twitter facebook instagram you will find so much of ijazat everywhere and even the traits in the people you meet guzar had so much of reflection of coming times in that film in the characters Yeah I think that's one of the reason why it uh, holds up so well even today because it was a hit of its time. Yes. And that's why even like you said uh, today's generation totally uh, uh, relates to it and connects with it. And if you see the social media the generation of social media which was actually exposed to internet in 90s if you see uh, a lot of poetic sensibilities that generation on social media has taken from Gulzar 
so you will find a lot of inspiration a lot, a lot of gulzar like uh, images in their poetry a lot so of influence are, definitely yes so you find him as a mentor a kind of a dronacharya to a lot of eclabias well pawan ji that was great that's all i had uh, please feel free to add any other interesting bit uh, that many people might not know of or anything that you might think might be of interest for people of uh, who are fans of the film first time i met gulzar sahab in 1997 okay and like many people one of the first question in my meeting was 116 chand ki raatein to ki bhai 116 chand ki raatein kya hai ah Please yes think behind that yes to hum logo ka 116 ka hamara interpretation hota tha tab internet hota nahi tha तो वो कि क्या वो चार महीने थे मतलब वो वो इंटरप्रिटेशन अगर आप इंटरनेट पे कहीं देखोगे तो दैट वाज इनिशिएटेड फ्रॉम अस ओनली ओके तो वी आस्ड हिम तो ही सेड नो तो वी आस्ड हिम कि भाई क्या इसका पीछे कॉन्सेप्ट क्या है तो बोले देर इज नो कॉन्सेप्ट आई कुड हैव रिटर्न वन एक सौ सत्रह आई कुड है एक सौ चार बट इट इज द साउंड ऑफ द वर्ड जो पोइटिक है उसमें कितना सूट करता है एंड इफ यू सी एक्सप्लोरेशन of uh, gulzar's treatment with the uh, human relations in all his films i have found a common thread between three films it is achanak ijazat and libas and there's a triangle in all three films and it is female protagonist takes the escape route and uh, probably because she is missing the commitment she is missing the time she expected she is missing the commitment she expected in the marriage whether it's lili chakravarti and uh, vinod khanna in achanak because vinod was unable to give him time he was uh, committed to the nation and his duty as a army man so somewhere she is lonely she tries to or find an escape route if not escape uh, similarly in ijazat rekha when she finds that uh, the husband is not as committed as she wanted she finds an escape route and same happens in libas where uh, they have a very cordial relationship they have a love marriage um, shabana and nasir for their love for theaters for their love for uh, drama but somehow shabana finds a lot of uh, emptiness empty spaces when it comes to seeing the things as a wife so somewhere she finds that uh, the husband is not like how she wanted a husband so this is uh, somewhere i find a kind of a common thread although all three films are totally different and that's the magic of gulzar that's very the, interesting the, 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 yeah the, i i hadn't thought about those three films along these lines yeah, yeah. there is definitely a triangle there is definitely what you're saying about the well even after the marriage there is no fulfillment of commitments there is no fulfillment that makes the female protagonist uh, to walk out of that uh, institution of marriage that's a very interesting uh, comment on institution of marriage in india in all three films very interesting very interesting. but but all three films are totally totally different they are totally different films totally different stories totally different uh, characters totally different situations but still uh, somewhere this kind of uh, comment on marriage and uh, the way uh, the female protagonist take a call this is somewhere i find a common thread oh yeah yeah i make makes sense makes sense that's a wonderful observation great okay. great this was really great uh, pawan ji i know we went over time but i'm just glad uh, we, we had we, this we, long we, long chat we we went uh, overboard also yes <laughs> <laughs> but wo train delay ho rahi thi to well put hota hai na ki ek hi raat ki to baat hai तो बात की बात है और जिंदगी बाकी तो नहीं तो ठीक है थैंक यू सो मच फॉर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कमिंग ऑन द पॉडकास्ट एंड शेयरिंग सच इंटरेस्टिंग सो वी स्टार्टेड विद छोटी सी कहानी से बारिशों के पानी से सारी वादी भर गई अब सारी वादी भर गई व्हेन यू एक्चुअली मैप इट टू योर हार्ट इट 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 इज अ मेटाफोर फॉर ओवरवेलमिंगनेस द सेम एक्सपीरियंस यू गेट आफ्टर वॉचिंग इजाजत and the same experience you get after talking on ijazat with a person like you it it has been an overwhelming experience thank you so much uh, pawan ji if you like the episode 
do spread the word about this episode and the podcast. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your pods. Also, please do drop us a review in Apple Podcasts when you get a chance. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Love of Cinema SF8. That's the episode. This is Himanshu signing off. And like always, thank you for listening to the Love of Cinema podcast.